Hey everybody, Dr. Paula Ruffin. I'm here with my good friend, Jill Beckman. Jill and I have been dear friends for approximately 18 years. Beautiful. Yeah, so she's actually a rep for Metagenics Midwest, which is the company that I have chosen to partner with for supplementation and of course my education for these past 18 years. Yes. And when we met, she had a baby. No, I don't think I was pregnant yet, but we met and she started teaching me about nutrition. And then shortly thereafter, I got pregnant and we just bonded. And we have probably been meeting and having these conversations once a month for the past 18 years. So we're both natural mamas all yeah, the way. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we just bonded over kids and pregnancy and yeah. raising healthy families and and good food and good, really good food yes, <laughs> yes always she has a garden that is to die for that i need to come over and do a video in the garden oh, nice we'll do that okay. yeah her you literally her garden is envy worthy for sure yeah labor love for sure she does a great job so uh so we started connecting years and years ago she's been a big inspiration for me to get into functional medicine she actually was my first push to my first certification in functional medicine my second and my third actually nice. so, so yeah so i owe so much to you so thank you so much you and bet. so this is one of our just our monthly meetings and today we're going to talk about magnesium and the importance of magnesium so um, jill has brought us a couple of studies and i'm going to let her get started and tell us why magnesium is so important so magnesium the first thing to think of is it's the calmer it's the great calmer so there's over 400 pathways in the body that are magnesium dependent. And so if you don't have enough magnesium, that pathway cannot complete its process. So think of calming muscle fibers down. That if, if you're just all tight back here and, and muscles tend to cramp on you, that's a magnesium deficiency. Mm -hmm. um, another one would be um, the heart muscle. So the heart muscle has to beat often, yeah. right? And so it uses up a ton of magnesium. So any kind of, of heart muscle issues, magnesium is the first thing that you do. It's, it's basically just part of like the top five things that any functional medicine practitioner is gonna do for a patient. And it's easy. And, and it is easy. So yes, you can get it from food, but it is hard to get enough from food. And that's where this current study, so this is last month, and this is European Journal of Nutrition. And so it was 6,000 brain scans, and they were looking, uh, it was British people, they were looking at how much magnesium they get in their diet or supplements um, after looking all of these 6,000 brain scans. And they found that if folks had 550 milligrams a day of magnesium in their food habits, that their, their brain was younger. Their brain was literally a year younger than their actual, and their uh, brain volumes were bigger. That sounds good. As well as uh, lower white matter lesions. It's amazing. And so lesions are where you're headed into dementia and Alzheimer issues. Okay. That, that think of it as a thought or where's my keys, where's my phone, has to travel through fat of the brain yeah. to like, it's on the kitchen table. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you have lesions, then it can't travel as quickly and smoothly. Right. And so magnesium is calming the brain from that excitability and anxiety, too, sure. right? Sure. And so any kind of just too hyper from muscles to, to arrhythmias of the heart as well as um, mood, magnesium first, people. Yeah. yeah. One of the things when I am working with a client and they are, and I'm, I'm palpating them or I'm trying to stretch and I feel hard muscles. Yeah. That's the first thing is, is you are deficient in magnesium. Right. In fact, all minerals really, but for the sake of today, straight, you need magnesium to get right. in there and start to soften things. Because also if you think about, you know, yes, the lesions create that hardness and then the muscles themselves tighten up and now you're not getting as much blood flow through there. You're not getting right. the nutrients. So if you can bring a nutrient as simple as magnesium in to just start to get in, nourish those areas and help them soften. And then over time, 
you're going to start to feel a little bit looser, a little more relaxed, not as sore, not as tense. Yes. And your daily activities will actually be a lot easier. So what forms of magnesium should we be looking at when we're talking about taking a supplement? So the magic number in this study was 550 milligrams, and they did not differentiate on forms, but you and I know so much about right. forms, and that's, that's where it feeds into how to make this practical, right? So magnesium glycinate. Magnesium... So wait, hold, hold on, back, one, back yes, up one yes. sec. So forms, when we're talking about forms, we're talking about cheap forms that don't absorb very well, yeah. and then we're talking about more expensive forms, but they're going to absorb very well and do very specific things. And there's a whole scale. So, so, so let's, let's start at the bottom and start to work our way up. Oh, okay. Or do you want to start at the top and work our way down? Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Whatever you want to do. Okay. All, All right. right. So, so, so when you read a label, my friends, cause I've had this question yeah. in the past couple of weeks is the word magnesium and then it's going to have a milligram amount, okay? But there's a parenthesis. So it'll say like magnesium three and eight. But the three and eight is in parentheses. And so that's actually the elemental amount of magnesium. Which where, means... So let's say that the label says that it's 98 milligrams of magnesium, parentheses, three and eight, mm -hmm. unparentheses. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it'll also say magnesium three and eight. And then it'll say 1.3 grams. Well, you're not getting all of the magnesium. That means the three and eight and the magnesium bound together weigh 1.3 grams. Got it. And so it's confusing. You, you might look at, oh, well, I can just take one of these yeah. and I'm going to get my 550. Yeah. No, 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 no. One of these is actually going to be the 98. Okay. Okay, so that's important, how to right. read labels. Right. You want it to be in parentheses whenever the magnesium is bound to, because it has to be bound to something. Okay. All right. So, so how, how will you know how much is, is the bound form then what you want? And how do you know how much is in there if it's bound? They're all going to be bound to something. And so that's where our education of what they should okay. be bound to or not. And so when you're reading labels, you just want it in parentheses. So okay. then you know exactly how much magnesium you're getting. Got it. So magnesium oxide mm -hmm. would be a low on the totem pole in that you're really not getting much absorption mm -hmm. out of that at all. It's like a rock. Think of it like a rock. Exactly. And, and in fact, there's exactly. other, other minerals are, you know, there's zinc oxide or you know if iron, you see, oxide. iron oxide yeah if you see anything on a nutrition label that is has oxide it's not i agree exactly I agree. yeah so so like iron oxide mm -hmm. that's rust shavings oh that's awesome and that's what's in the most of the yeah. uh prenatals oh my god most of the, and that's the constipating form okay. we're back to magnesium doesn't hurt to Next filter in a little bit. Next would probably be um, citrate. Okay. Would be on the list here. So citrate, it's not like it's evil, but you're not getting the the magnesium, I should say, into the body. It's staying locally in the bowel. And so what magnesium citrate does is that's what milk of magnesia right. is. It is pulling water out of the the intestinal lining to have a nice giant poo poo. So that is for constipation, yeah. it's for traveling, and that you have a hard time with having a stool, which we could correct with many other things. That is just a quick fix. So, so if somebody is traveling, and they're because travel constipation is a thing, yeah. they could just go grab some magnesium citrate, citrate yeah. take that, and we're good. And they're gonna have a giant, yeah. okay. giant stool. Instead yes. of taking a stool softener, that would so be So it's a not much... a daily, because right. it's not correcting the problem. So citrate, it just washes the magnesium through the stool so it's not getting to your muscle and to your heart, which is where we're in your brain. That's where we yeah. want it. So lesson there is make sure if you're taking a magnesium and you're trying to take it for muscles or brain or joint, that it doesn't say magnesium citrate. So again, like what are you taking it for? Yeah. What does it say? And is it, is it doing the thing? Another thing about reading labels with magnesium is sometimes you'll see a proprietary blend oh, yeah. of multiple forms of magnesium, right? And then it'll say, oh, per serving. And you always want to look at how many pills is in a serving. The first form is the most that's in that mix. And so you'll find that um, they're going to use the cheaper forms. 
That's really yeah. my point here. Yeah. Is there's going to be the all these different blends. forms, and glycinate will be in there, but it'll be further on down in the list. Yeah. So we want glycinate. Yeah. So there's like calming products out there, and they're usually citrate. And so they're not actually calming you. Usually in the beginning you feel it, let's say like three days, yeah. you feel calmer from it, but then your stool is going to start being loose yeah. and it's not getting into the brain. So we all want to feel calm. So mag malate is okay. another form. So magnesium malate does Where do get you into that? the brain. I don't know that I've seen that that often. It's um, in Tranquil. And so it does get across the blood brain barrier. Okay and it does help to calm down the excitability. Yeah. So this would be anxiety, Yes. maybe poor sleep, brain chatter. So then we're on to Meg 3 and 8, which we're in the, the like gold star ones yeah. now. So Meg 3 and 8 is very interesting. It was an MIT researcher who figured out that binding magnesium to 3 and 8 got it across the blood-brain barrier. Beautiful. So we patented it. But malate it. does too? It does too, but 3 and 8 does more so. Yeah. So three and eight is now the gold standard for brain anxiety, yeah. brain. So concussion. I use it a lot for concussion protocol. You bet. Yeah. And then dementia, Alzheimer's. And yeah. let, let's just say um, remembering names, mm -hmm. remembering anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where are my keys? <laughs> Mag three and eight is, is your friend. So the patent that this MIT researcher has on it is you can only have, all of us can only have 50 milligrams of elemental magnesium. And remember, we're trying to get to 550, right? Yeah. But remember we said it gets across the blood-brain barrier. Right. And so it's not getting to the heart and to your back and your muscles. And so you still need to take mag glycinate even when you're using mag 3 and 8. Interesting. And so typically the dose for memory is 150 of the three and eight form. And usually it's at night because it helps calm the chatter that we all have in the middle we of the all night. all have, yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. Reviewing the day. Stop. I could have said this better know, exactly. or whatever it yeah. is. <laughs> and so magglycinate is our gold star mm -hmm. um, along with three and eight. But magglycinate is going to be getting to the, your muscular zones as well as... Um, helps with menstrual cramps, mm -hmm. helps with the heart. So usually we want to take both, three and eight and glycinate, but not necessarily all at once. Is the perfect magnesium supplement three and eight bound with glycinate, but according to what you just said, maybe not. You would take that in two I mean, it two would, separately. but you have to take quite a few pills. So there isn't one big uh, supplement out there for magnesium that combines those two. I agree. Right. The three and eight is, is actually a large size molecule. Mm -hmm. it, it uses up the space in the capsule. So it'd be, it'd be too big then if somebody... And nobody likes big Yeah, because mag three and eight is, it's, the, that it's pill a, itself is pretty darn big. Yeah, okay. And that's all that's in it. Which is, I love the, the mag, uh, so Metagenics has a magnesium glycinate in its powder form and it's, well, between Endura and MetaRelax are right. two of my absolute favorites. In fact, I have a client, she's been a client for many years and she came in a couple weeks ago and she was like, I don't know what's going on. My anxiety has been through the mm -hmm. roof. Nothing's really changed. I, I don't know. I'm just feeling anxious and you know, basically angst for no reason. Yeah. And I said, and, I, and because I know her, I said, we probably need to look at some gut. However, try this and I gave her the the meta relax and she came in a week later and she was like that stuff was freaking miraculous oh, beautiful. yeah so just so and it could have been and she has a history of cancer and so you know was it is it just her nutritional deficiencies rearing their right. ugly head and she right. just needed a few extra minerals but she came in again today so it's now been a, about maybe three or four weeks that she's been on the meta relax and she's like She's like, still working, amazing, I'm sleeping better, I'm feeling better, that anxiety completely gone. So I love when we can take and it's something only 150. simple. Yeah, yeah. There's only 150 milligrams of my glycinin in there. So. And, yeah, and when you do something that's that simple, that makes that big of an impact. That's, yes. And that's what I love about, I mean, magnesium. It's not, it's not anything fancy. It's just magnesium, but we got to get the right form. We have to get the right form so that it actually absorbs. It gets mm -hmm. past the bowel mm -hmm. and gets to your brain yeah. and to your muscles. Yeah. And then you feel better. We have a list of foods. Now, 
do you think it's possible to get 500 milligrams of the proper forms of magnesium <clears throat> through food? It's or such do you a great question. Yeah. I would love to say yes. A, the soil is depleted, mm -hmm. and so the foods themselves don't have as much magnesium as 100 years ago. Um, B, like when you read this list, the pumpkin seeds, you have to get four tablespoons yeah. of pumpkin seeds, and that's what, 168 milligrams yeah. of magnesium. Four tablespoons. Yeah. You might well, get one. I could salad. easily eat four tablespoons of pumpkin seeds, but here's the four and a half tablespoons of ground flax seed is a hundred that's a lot that's a lot of flax seed yeah and I, and flax seed can either like really make you bloated and constipated or it can really blow out your bowels so to me flax is i, I actually just personally like it's just a i avoid it because i'm like i don't know <laughs> it's i don't know <laughs> we don't want to go there <laughs> we just don't want to go there <laughs> yeah yeah so um so tofu is one of the higher ones on this list so this half one? a cup yeah. of tofu is 127 milligrams. Where like edamame beans, um, it's a half a cup is 74. 74, yeah. So it's a decent amount. Yeah, yeah. You, we just want to make sure it's organic mm -hmm. so that you're not dealing with GMOs. Kelp, 121, three ounces of kelp, 120, but who's, nobody's eating kelp. Or three ounces you know, of it. Or exactly. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, you think of like if you go uh, to a sushi bar and you get, you know, sushi wrapped in seaweed yeah. you're still not Maybe getting a three ounces out yeah. of it, you know it's like you know encouraging you to find foods that are magnesium rich number one but then we still need to be looking at high quality supplements so when people go into the big box store what typically are they getting there usually it's citrate okay it's definitely citrate is the number one form out there yeah. it's it's cheap but it's not getting systemic, sure. it's just moving the water. And this is such a great point because I'll often get, I'm gonna use calcium for a minute, where I would have patients come in and they have osteopenia, it's one step before osteoporosis, and then they'll say, you know, I've been taking calcium my whole life. And I, I say, well, it's not working, is it? Because exactly. they're probably taking, because we could have this exact same conversation about calcium. In fact, we probably should. Right. I because agree. it's the same exact thing. If you're not on the proper form, it's not going to do what it's intended to do. And you ultimately end up losing in the end. One of the things here in this study was talking about with the brain scans and people taking enough magnesium at age 40. Oh, so true. what if people are over 40 and they haven't been getting enough calcium, what do we do with them? Is all hope lost? <laughs> so, so in this British study, it was 6,000 brain scans and it was showing that really the best statistics were if you started in your 40s of eating well to prevent brain lesions later, later on. Or if you already eat but well, But you right? can still create change with the brain with mag 3 and 8. Yeah. It, it usually takes, my friends, two to three weeks in order for magnesium to permeate and for you to really feel it. Yeah. But like you said with your patient, within one week, right. she sure. was feeling it. So that's how depleted she was yeah. in magnesium. Yeah, just formatted. soaked it right in, yeah. Another note about this study is that they said that it was women who did better with magnesium and the brain. Interesting. It was more important for the ladies. Yeah. One of the reasons is all of our hormones use up magnesium. Yeah, I was just gonna ask, do just you think it's because them. we're more naturally depleted or it's do we utilize more? Yeah. And we tend to be more anxious and so that burns no. up magnesium. <laughs> so that when, when you're stressed, it's magnesium, Yeah and B vitamins. Are you saying women you are stressed? Up. I am. They are doing it all these oh my days. God. <laughs> Juggling all the things. So even more important than for women to be getting on right. the bandwagon. Okay, so don't be disappointed if you haven't been eating healthy and you're just now starting to really take matters into your own hands and you're over 40, not all hope is lost. There's always room for improvement. And as long as you start stepping forward into that and taking some responsibility for what you need to be doing for good health, you're, you're gonna be just fine. Um, so I think the on, on last note is, 
the highest things in magnesium pumpkin seeds four tablespoons flax almonds mm -hmm. one and a half handfuls chia seeds spinach swiss chard yellow beans beet greens okra and then the soy that i mentioned so most people don't know that they can eat the greens of the beet we i grew up on those but i also want to make a note as well with pumpkin seeds and almonds is that we're looking at ideally this doesn't define it but i would put my spin on it and say we want the raw sources because you want to avoid these the pumpkin seeds the almonds any of these nuts and seeds that have seed oils if you look at the label it might say uh, you know they might be roasted it could be in um, sunflower oil or safflower or even cottonseed oil which <laughs> these seed oils are highly toxic. They're washed with hexane. They have actually have been shown to cause more heart disease than anything. So you wanna really avoid those seed oils because you know, you're gonna be doing more damage to yourself if you're having those. So try to choose more raw sources without the seed oils. And you can roast them yourself. Yes, absolutely. And then you know what yes, they're yeah. that hard. Yeah, roll them in a little bit of like lard or tallow or something. <laughs> Her avocado oil. There you go. That'll work. Anything else on magnesium? The RDA is 300 milligrams, and we want you at 550. Tell us why we want more nutrients. <laughs> every time the camera turns. Every time the camera turns on. Uh, why do we want more nutrients than the RDA? Well, tell us about how the RDA sets their numbers. It's a long conversation, yeah. my friend. But, yeah, keep it, it real. It is just yeah. to prevent frank disease. Yeah. And when people see, they're like, oh, you want me to take 10, 20 times more than what the RDA says? Mm -hmm. I do, because the RDA numbers are literally one step above disease. Just because, you know, I would say, like, if I drew a line here and health was here and sickness was here, are you on that line? So just because you don't have sickness doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy. And that's how the RDAs are. They're just enough nutrients to prevent disease. And so we want to maximize your nutritional sufficiency so that we not only prevent disease, but we want to keep you, get you really far away from disease. So they were developed so that school lunches and military meals met the RDA. So ketchup is part oh of gosh. meeting those equivalents. Oh my gosh. All right, so this is not about health at all. Yeah. It is just so that school lunches and government lunches nice. yeah. won't cause scurvy or beriberi or yeah. any of those things. Are you saying the government oh, oh, hi. doesn't okay, particularly okay. have everybody's best interest at hand? Oh. Is that? <laughs> I don't know. She may she may have Did an underlying. She didn't, you know, she didn't say that out loud, but I don't know. We maybe read between the lines. If that's it, then we're going to wrap it up because yes. the dog is going out of his mind right now. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I hope that was helpful on magnesium. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, please leave a comment. As always, I appreciate you being here, and I will see you on the next one.